Hi, I'm Tayana. Hi, and I'm Pratin Pasqueta. Welcome to A Warrior's Path, Path to, to wholeness. wholeness. Yes, we have a workshop lined up for you on January 9th. And before we get started telling you about that, we want to take hats off to all mm -hmm. of you, to all of you who are going on this recovery journey, because we know, we know how hard it is and how it's really hard to get information and put it together and know what to do and just to navigate these kinds of things. So um, when we are in this situation, the one thing I think we want to share with you is that the recovery is multiple uh, things that need to be addressed, multiple modalities. And we mm -hmm. hope to give you tools that you can put to use immediately that are going to address all these different components mm -hmm. of this wholeness, wholeness being mm -hmm. the key word. It's not just one part of you. It's many mm -hmm. parts of you that need um, to heal and yeah. to recover. Yeah, we're addressing it holistically. So we're going to address the spiritual level, the emotional level, the mental level, and the physical level, and how this abuse and how narcissism affects you on all of those different levels, giving you the tools that you need to have a plethora of things in your toolbox. Yes. So some of the things we're going to be recover um, talking about in the workshop are... Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll let you start and kind of go over the things that okay. uh, you're going to address, and then okay. I'll jump in and kind of share some of mine. Okay, perfect. I'm going to be... Um, setting a space for you to share some of your story with me so that I can process out and help you to process some grief work. I'm also going to do a lot of demonstration on breath work and meditation. I'm the spiritual. <laughs> I cover the spiritual realm over here. And, um, we, um, and, and so I'm going to do a lot of, give you a lot of tools that can help calm the nervous system, bring you into a space of self-love, self-care, um, how to change your beliefs, how to change, how to pro um, grieve, you know, and, and still, you know, uh, come back to wholeness through that grief. You well, know, I funny. can just say that I have worked with Tayana and I was fortunate enough to find her on my journey where I was just like, you know, trying everything that I could find um, to help myself. And she has been extremely instrumental in helping me make really good sound progress um, and to get closer to where I want to be with myself and with my recovery. So uh, mm -hmm. I trust her completely to be able to give you some relief and to give you some things that will really help you uh, figure out where you need to start and what needs work and how to, to uh, address those things. Um, some of the things that I uh, will be working with you on, um, I'm going to harvest from my own experience. Um, and first of all, I think that um, working on inner child, wounding, toxic scripts, um, programming that is uh, dysfunctional, addressing that and learning how to, um, how to reconcile that and heal what's in. You hear a lot of programs talk about that, about uh, the whatever condition you have on the inside is what you draw to you from the outside. And that's exactly true. This is, uh, you know, we're all mm -hmm. just sort of echoing the same thing. We just have a little different way of approaching it. I think mm -hmm. that's the difference between the different programs that are out there for recovery. Uh, you know, they're all good and they're all telling you the same thing. It's just a different way of achieving that, I guess. Mm -hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, I've joined several. <laughs> I signed up for numerous programs and tried to pick the parts that worked for me the best and use those and then toss away the parts that weren't working so well. So we'll do, we do working, um, we'll be working on that. I also think one of the big things is that we don't always get closure from the narcissist, the sociopath, and even the psychopath. And those three cluster B disordered individuals sometimes overlap so mm -hmm. that they could all share some of the same common features. You don't know what you're dealing with. They could have other comorbidities like addiction of some kind, all kinds of things. So most of the time, these individuals are incapable of giving you the closure that you so desperately uh, want to have, need to have for mm -hmm. healing. And so we're going to do something called the proxy partner where I will actually 
walk you through um, sort of a faux um, dialogue with your person where uh, you get to hear the words that you are wanting so much to hear um, so that you can process that and know mm -hmm. that it's not your fault. So important. There's nothing you couldn't could have done to, to make a different outcome. This is how it ends with these people is mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you're hurt and injured and trying to get your life back and trying to get up on your feet. And they are uh, off doing something else in their whole disordered, dysregulated world. Mm -hmm. And one of the last mm -hmm. things I'll tell you about is healthy boundaries. Uh, your friends and family sometimes are overwhelmed, right? When you tell them, you start oversharing and mm -hmm. telling them, oh my gosh, I'm suffering. It is just, I feel so hopeless and I'm having this nightmare and I'm having this uh, looping obsessive thoughts about, about this person and I can't stop. And, and they, it's too much and they don't yes. understand it and they don't know what to do to help you. And it hurts them to see you hurt and it can trigger them and it can make it to where they just have to step away and they can't be there for you at all. So to preserve your relationships with friends and family that are at risk at a time like this, when you're at risk, we're going to uh, do some role playing where mm -hmm. we're gonna show you how to structure mm -hmm. a conversation with Just, your friends and family. And how to set healthy boundaries for yourself. Absolutely. Especially when you're in a vulnerable state and you're in recovery, you need to be able to learn in and out of recovery how to set healthy boundaries. It's a huge thing for deterring toxic people from coming back into your life. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a lot of great things. We have um, worksheets to give you to work through. We have role playing. We have um, all kinds of... Um, other things we're gonna do with you on January 9th um, to kind of help you understand this better and have some things you can actually practice. You're gonna put them into practice, into mm -hmm. application, and see some real success and real movement forward out of this. You know, you wanna be free, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is a gift you can give yourself for the holidays. Yes. And, um, you know, to start off the new year, January 9th, with this is going to frame your recovery in ways that show you're committed to getting better. You're not, you're, you are not just going to accept being in pain and it's just such difficult pain and confusing. We want mm -hmm. to help you start off this new 2021. It's got to be better than the last one, right? This, right. Right. And exactly. so we're going to um, try to help you on that journey. So anything okay. else? No, that's about it. We hope to see you there. Yes, January 9th, 1 sign to 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. As soon as you sign up, you'll be receiving emails from us and the tools start coming right away. Yes. Okay, see you soon. Bye.